Well, Robbie, you channeled ACDC in your intro. Some high voltage tennis, and we saw it right there. Wow. You suggested that you hope both players play well at the same time. We'll be in for something special. Well, that was not a bad opening point. Oh. Oh. Only 22 years of age, Yannick Sinner, but to me, he's improving all the time. He's looking to add dimensions to his game. Big step up in 2023. He's not afraid to move forward. He'll serve and volley occasionally. We know Sin is incredibly safe from the back of the court, hits with a lot of power. But he's developing a nice net game. Can slice, can defend. He's becoming quite the complete player at only 22 years of age. Night for seven. And Rublev, he just keeps coming. Just incredible racket head speed. Doesn't matter where he's in the court, low, high, medium bounce. He just throws his racket at the ball with trust. Game. And I had a chance to chat with him at the exhibition event that was held in the last year in Abu Dhabi. And... You know, he was he was sitting alongside Daniel Medvedev at the time, and I said, "What's the off season like?" And he goes, "One week maximum." He does not like to take time away from his sport. He loves repetition. That's what gives him comfort, Wally. Yeah, repetition will callous your mind, as they say. And you can see in his shots how repetitious they are. Yeah. And and look, that might be the knock on him, Robbie. Is this his ninth or tenth? Quarterfinal. Tenth. Tenth. Yeah. Not being past the quarterfinals of a slam for a guy ranked five, top yeah. ten. It's a little yeah. unusual. Yep. Yeah. And he just has a, a little bit of trouble. If someone is one shot better than him, he has a little bit of trouble going to plan B, which might speak a bit to his training methods. Thank you. Which are repetitious. Yannick has been to the semi-final of a major, of course. Made it through to the semi-finals at SW19. So he knows what it's like to go deep at a major, but he'd like to go one further. And I think there's many people, certainly within uh, the media world, keen tennis followers that believe he could do it this year. And of course, he's got to get past Ruplev. This evening, it's the box. Darren Cahill, of course, you guys know all too well. Simone Bagnozzi in the white Nike shirt. Berto Ferrar. Next to him, uh, the wise old sage. And just behind him, Berto, is Yannick's agent, Lawrence Frankapan. What a good signing that was. Not a bad man to have in your corner, Darren Cahill. Oh, see you, man. Coach Leighton Hewitt, Grand Slam champion. Andre Agassi, there he is, bottom left of screen there with the cap Beauty, mate. and the glasses. Beauty, mate. That's how you know he's Australian. <laughs> and, of course, Simona Halep. So he's had a pretty good stable. Yeah, and he has coached them at varying stages of their career. Leighton Hewitt, very early in the piece, as a teenager, One to his first slam. Yep. Agassi at the back end of his career to a slam. Of course, Andre had a, a bevy of them under his belt, but looking for that edge as an older player. And then, of course, Simona Hull yep. transitioning to the women's game. Amazing, amazing record he has. And, of course, he and Simona shared ATP Coach of the Year for 2023. And Darren is pretty quick to deflect praise to Simone. 
He says Simona spends the greater part of the year with Yannick. 39. Simone. Simone. And yeah. deserves a lot of the credit. Yep. There he is. Was, was brought in after he split from Ricardo Piatti, who really built the foundation of his game. How's that shot making? We're going to see plenty of that. The forehand in that fifth set against Alex Dimonor was some of the biggest hitting I've ever seen from Andre. Talk about gripping and ripping. Well, it's almost as though he's come out thinking that the way through is to be ultra aggressive, just not holding back at all. So he doesn't want to get in extended rallies. He's really trying to shorten the points. And even in that slow motion shot of Rublev's forehand, the racket is flying. <laughs> like, he, the tip of the racket is absolutely flying. <laughs> and if you're going to be on the red line, expect a few mistakes. 40-30. Talk about the repetition yes. of Rublev's training. And you can almost see it, can't you? Just grooving those ground shots. But you look at Alcaraz, you look at Sinner, you look at TFO. They are improving their net game. And he has a bit of work to do in that department. That was not an easy shot, don't get me wrong. That's the volley he actually prefers, the top spin volley. Advantage, Rubin. There's a lot to discuss about the ground stroking of these two, but I think the key in this match is going to rely on the return stats. When they played in Vienna, there was a big difference in the effectiveness of Sinner returning serve versus this guy. Game. That is a striped backhand, and Team Rublev. Be delighted with the starts because their charge leads 2 1. Something else I like about both these players is they play a good clip. Mm -hmm. There's no mucking about, is there? I tell you, last night I really enjoyed Alcaraz. That's just a little high five with the hot shots ball kid who tossed the coin. Last night, Alcaraz and Kekmanovic. Wow, they played quick, and they didn't worry about crowd movement. They just, they just kept, at 30 love, people were moving. They just kept playing. It was brilliant. More of it, I say. Melbourne Park in all her glory. Time. It's the 55th Australian Open, and of course, we are playing here for the 37th year. Rod Laver Arena, the centerpiece of this magnificent sporting precinct. Its proximity to the CBD, it's just a 10 minute walk away at best. And full house Thank again, you, record attendances, and, and it looks like we are indeed going to cross that million people threshold through the turnstiles over the course of the 15 days. Light for service. Fifteen love. 
Guys, let me tell you, uh, this is uh, definitely a heavyweight match because there's no jabbing right now. They're just <laughs> swinging. <laughs> and uh, the acceleration that's coming from the racket from both players, but it's acceleration and then there's Rublev acceleration, and, and it's just incredible. Take a close look at the center serve, of course, changed it off to the French Open. Did Yannick last year after the early loss against 30. Daniel Altmaier. Arrived in her tog and Bosch and changed from the platform to the step up. And he's lowered the ball toss as well a little bit. And the product of which we see now. Of course, Flip, you were one of the best servers in the game. I'd like to get your thoughts on what you make of it, Wally. You as well, please. Oh. Oh. Well, Robbie, you're, I remember 15, last 14. year at Wimbledon, um, I was walking down, it was late in the afternoon, and uh, I just saw Sinner with a bag of balls and just serving on his own with just one of his uh, one of his teammates, you know, one of his team, and, and just working on the, the rhythm and working on the step, stepping into it, and the ball toss, focusing on the ball toss, and it was just impressive to see after one of his matches do that, you know, him out there. Oh. But, but I'm, a, I'm a fan of it. I just believe at times the ball toss can be a touch higher, but it's got some really nice rhythm. And I think it's definitely improved your serve. And defending is not necessarily Rublev's go. He'll try to hit his way out of trouble. And you touched on it, Robbie. He's had a tougher road to this quarterfinal in terms of hours on court. The five-set match against Dimina was was a tense affair, a physical affair. So if Sinner can spread the court and get his man on the move, will he have the endurance over time to stay with Sinner from the back of the court? Yeah, I needed that first serve. First serve percentage was in the 30s before that one. Yes. I like the serve. Look at the shape he gets, the shape of his body under the ball. So he got the nice rotation, strong leading left arm, nice leg drive, up and over. Good looking serve. And he's a tall man. So he's got a bit of elevation there. Good margin on his serve. He's deceptively tall. You know, Robbie, as you mentioned, he's 22 years old, so he'll continue to build out as well. He'll feel out, you know, uh, as, as, a, as an athlete, and um, he'll, that soon will get bigger, you know, stronger in the legs. He'll start accelerating through even harder, and that's going to end up being one of his huge weapons. I mean, he's just got a great all-round game. Game two. Well, there's a good example of the serve coming to the rescue just when he needed it. Two games on. Our ATP lists him as six foot two, but I think he's definitely got a little bit more than uh, one meter, 88 centimeters. I think he's closer to six three now. I think that, you know, they take the stats when you come on the tour, yep. weight and height. But obviously players, as, as Mark suggested, over the years they'll put on, you can put up, you can put on as many 10 kilos over the course of a career. And of course, if they come onto the tour as a teenager, they're going to get a little taller Lovely. by the time they're 21, 22. It's interesting, there's a lot of players out now that, that have a, a slighter physique. They're not too heavy, but they're still strong. 
both these guys are perfect examples of that. We saw Daniel Medvedev in action yesterday as well. Oh. These tall players are such good movers and such good athletes. Love 13. I think the biggest advent I've seen in you know, the physical regime is this core strength and stability training. I think it marries the coordination chain of the lower limbs of the upper body because they're so strong and mobile and flexible with the core. Everything's core, core, core these days. It has been for the last decade or so. And, and they get power. They're tall men, 6'2", yep. 6'3". Six, six, they've got these long limbs. So you get the strong base, and then you extend the arm, and the racket extends, and the racket head flies. Love tremendous awesome. speed. A bit like Tiger Woods swinging a golf club. You know, the tip of the racket is absolutely flying. As I said, strong base. And you've got yourself a decent shot. Senna's got a decent shot here at Love 40. Oh. He's overplayed a bit. This game has Rube Levy's on the edge. Senna makes him pay. Eight points in a row for the Italian. And he leads 3-2. Three, two. three games and two. It's almost as though Rublev has come in with a preconceived notion that I just got to play big and keep Sinner off balance, but uh, it's got to be within reason, doesn't it? That's seven unforced errors to this point, and a lot of them in that last game on his serve. Gifted Sinner the break. I think that's just purely an indication of how fatigued he might be, just knows that he has to red line. Yeah, possibly. Just doesn't think he has a chance of going toe to toe. I think if you step out on the court with an idea in mind that you have to do something extreme or different, yeah. you're in a bit of trouble. You've got to play Time. your game and then manipulate according to score and what you're facing. The winner of this quarterfinal will take on Novak Djokovic, who was a winner earlier today in four sets against Taylor Fritz. Robbie, it's 11 p.m. In the evening in Melbourne, we had a really long day session. Did you just bled ever so slightly into the night session. And it is a packed house. It's a week weeknight here in Melbourne. People have got to go to work tomorrow, but nobody is leaving. And I think that's testament to the star value of these two players. We've got the top six seeds all here oh. in the quarterfinals. Djokovic, Alcaraz, Medvedev. Sinner, Rublev, and Zverev. So there it is again. Rublev, he's just feeling a little lactic, feeling a little heavy. Feels like he's got to get on the front foot early. Once again, just cutting it a bit fine. Guys, I know that Rublev likes to be aggressive and hit the ball, but right now he's Ground strokes are incredibly flat. There's absolutely no shape at all and zero margin on the ball.
didn't get it right, but there's the subtlety that is emerging in Sinner's game. Soft hands, clever shot. Did it from a position of strength. He was up 30 love, took a chance. And Mark, we talk about the power of these two players. How's that left, the big left foot step from Sinner there on the backhand? The yeah. strength I mean, uh, to defend know, without retreating. I mean, he, he takes a controlled slide and he has the balance and he's hitting it with power and, and, and recovering at the same time. He, he moves exceptionally well. And there's just a quick look at the... The average forehand net clearance, as Mark was alluding to, just oh. 58 centimetres for Rublev. That is awfully low. Not a lot of margin for error. Sinner, 30 centimetres higher, mm -hmm. a foot higher. Yeah. And that's the thing, it's not like uh, Sinner is hitting the ball, you know, not hitting the ball hard. I mean, my goodness, these guys are really pounding the ball. But, but like I said, it's just got that little bit of more shape on the ball. And you know, I'm just sitting here looking at this and going, I mean, it cannot be consistent, possibly. It's almost like Sinner is like, let me just get one more ball in. He cannot keep hitting the ball this hard and this flat and, and this low. Game no, importance, you know, a couple of free points on serve, but not only that, but the time Sinari's which they have came. That serve was so good, it would have been good for both boxes. That's always nice. Dissected the centre tee. There's a great shot of the crowd. As I suggested, it's, uh, we're, we're just past 11pm in the evening here, but Thank nobody you. is leaving. Be a few red eyes at work tomorrow, Robbie. Yeah, and once again, who can get control of the rally with their respective forehands? Love the team. with. A little bit more shape to his. Not the same raw speed that Rublev has, but let's keep an eye on those numbers as the match unfolds. Low over the net and very fast for Andre. Just won his first Masters 1000 at the clay courts in Monte Carlo last year. Fernando Vicente in the red shirt, his longtime coach, sharing that responsibility now with Alberto Martin. We're seeing that a bit, aren't we? Dual coaches. Both these players have two coaches. It's a long season. Share the workload. 15, 13. That man bottom left as well, uh, Charlie Costa. He is one of the best physios in the business. There's Alberto Martin just scratching his chin. Very good singles player. Both these guys always enjoyed playing on the clay. Let's for seven. Thirty all. uptick in tournament wins for Andre Rublev 2022 versus 2023 mostly 250s and 1500 2022 of course then elevated it to that Masters 1000 win last year
40-13. You know, for me, guys, just the variation that Sinner has in his game, and especially on the slice, I think will make a big difference tonight. You know, he hit and then mix up the pace. Oh. I think a point like that's going to trouble Rublev. Game. So he reduces the arrears. New balls, please. And it's Sinner who Sinner leads by a break in the first set. I'll never want a quarter final at a major. Let's go through those losses and let's decide if it's a match he, he could have won or not. Nadal, US Open. No. Medvedev, US Open. No. Sitsipas, Roland Garros. No. Medvedev, Australian Open. No. Chilich, Roland Garros. Yes. Lost that one, 7-6 in the fifth. I agree with you there. Francis Tiafa, US Open. Yes. Djokovic, Oz. No. Djokovic, Wimbledon. No. Medvedev, US Open. No. So two. What was the score with TFO? Six, six, and four. Yeah. Okay. Tight. Yeah. If memory serves, was off the back of a Time. long match the round before. Both players looking to make it through to the semi finals at this major for the very first time. It's already been a good start to the year for Sinner winning in Hong Kong. It was the warm-up tournament for him before coming down to Melbourne. Just thumping his legs, and is that an indication See they feel heavy? Well. He's not getting into the position that he would like. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how these guys defend. I mean, they smack the ball at each other, but they don't give up ground. They're very good at squaring up, moving laterally, but holding their line. They don't give up too much territory. In a slice. I like it. And Mark said it's 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 getting better all the time. I mean that was perfect. Slow, there deep, complete change of pace. And our good friend Rublev was out in front of it. He dragged it wide. He was out in front of it. The slower ball. And he just missed a defensive slice in the last game that maybe clipped the tape. Oh. It's coming along nicely. Two backhand defends and the forehand defends. Squares up, gets on the outside leg and doesn't give up an inch of ground. And he makes Rublev play two or three more shots. And that's important. Over time, that is important.
30 all. Of course, just sitting behind Fernando Vicente it was a Gallo Blanco, of course, former player. There's Gallo, and he takes care of all the financial affairs. He's the agent of Andre these days. Completely committed to every shot, isn't he? Let's see if Sinner goes wide here. He hasn't used it a lot. Demon R was pretty effective with the wide serve. Let's preserve his. And of course, Rublev, he, he stands there with a pretty extreme Western grip to return, so that he's not going to block too many forehand returns. If you can get that nice slider wide, can trouble him. Yeah. Goes body forehand. It's, that's a, I, I really Brenton. love that serve because Rublev is staying close to the Melbourne side, but what he's doing is taking a big split step forward when Sinner's putting that ball toss up and he's cutting off the angles nicely. So uh, body serve is just really smart. Oh. Double trouble. And the body serve is one thing, but if you can get it forehand hip, that is the serve. Backhand hip players can generally get their racket out in front of their body and fend it off, but the forehand hip is a nightmare because your elbow automatically tucks in behind your body and somehow you've got to get the racket face on the ball. Rublev is one behind that second serve. It was a problem when they played in Vienna last time out. It's been a bit of a problem this evening as, as well. Speed gun on that. Yeah, that is redlining. Boomski of a forehand. One six two. Booming through the air. Game. Another strong hold, and he will force Sinner to step up to the line to try and serve out the opening Sinner set at five four. four. Robbie, last night I saw Al Karaz fire a forehand at 170 plus. You just start to wonder where is the terminal velocity? Where does it end? Yes. And he hit one running forehand cross court. It was so hard. And the back of a rally where they exchanged a couple. I don't know if that was the shot or not, but it was ridiculous. Sinner spoke the other day in a post-match interview that he, he doesn't have the Baywatch body, apparently. But as you suggested, Robbie, there's got to be some core strength there. Yep. Combined with those Stop. long limbs. Plenty of power. Not much to choose between these two in the opening set, but an eight-point period from when Sinner was down 15-40 on his serve in the fourth game. Goes on to win the next eight points, salvage his serve, break Rublev in the next game. 
Thank and you. that's what separates Ready. them here as he serves for the opening set. So that's Novak like, isn't it? He's you think he's in trouble on the backhand side there, Sinner. Third Sina. But he gets on that outside leg. Doesn't give up any territory. And hits an aggressive shot when he's in trouble. Two shots later, the point is his. So after 37 minutes, Sinner has a couple of set points. Ball. That's a nice way yeah. to put the opening set on ice. Sinner does just that. And he wraps it up, six games to four. Okay, let's see how set number two shakes out. Guys, I'm going to be interested to see if Rublev's just going to continue to hit harder, and if he misses, hit harder. You know, if he's going to change up a little bit, maybe give a little bit more shape. In his previous match, Mark, against uh, Diminar, it was he, he probably hit the ball harder at the end of the match than he did at the start. It seems like his way forward, when he's in trouble, is to hit his way out of trouble. So it really comes down to execution. Get that right. And he's dangerous, but if the unforced errors rack up, as we saw in a couple of games in the first, it can go south quickly. You know what, though, Wally, there's a big difference between the way that Alex hits the ball and a big difference the way that Sinner hits the ball and what's coming at him. You know, he had more time with Alex playing against Alex, but here he can't accelerate. You know, the way Yannick's hitting the ball. It's... Disappointing that he missed, but you know you make the court a little smaller. First game when you second time. gets like that from Sinner, I mean it, it doesn't pay a dividend right there, but it pays a dividend down the line when you're that willing to defend. I love it. I mean, the modern game is all about power, but the more it becomes about power, the more important defense is. But Mark, you know, I I think the most dangerous shots pace is obviously huge. 
But when you've got pace and the ball's doing a lot through the air, which Sinna can make it talk through the air, you know, obviously Rublev's a little more direct. I mean, that's a nasty combination, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, Sinner has got a lot of acceleration on the ball. He's one of the biggest hitters, consistent hitters on the tour, and I think one of the, if not the cleanest hitter on the tour. But he's got a lot of shape. He just looks like a safer shot. It's a big difference. And then, and then, of course, you know, he'll get a, a, a shorter ball and he'll step in and flatten that out. But the, the, the actual rally shot is heavy, it's big, but it's got shape on the ball. Supplement the depth to that combination yeah, for me. Know. That is the holy trinity of ground stroking. You've got the pace, you've got the, the control with the spin, and then you throw in depth like that. It is suffocating. Well, what does a ball lose 30 40 percent of its pace once it hits the ground? So if it's traveling through the air to the baseline, it's not losing pace on the radar. One thing I wish I'd concentrated more on when I was hitting ground strokes, while you cross courts up the lines, you know, you hit 10 or 15 in a row and you think, yes, good consistency, I'm hitting it well, but I didn't have enough emphasis on that ball landing close to the baseline. Just, it's funny, but when I hit volleys, I was very cognizant of it, but not when I was hitting ground strokes. I can encourage coaches to get your players to aim for the baseline, even if they hit a couple of balls long. get the feeling of that ball being in the air for a long time. I always found it amusing there watching you. Rafa practice because when he played, you know, his forehand would drop very short, but it had so many revolutions on the ball, it would kick like a mule and yeah. it, was, it was hard to get behind. And then on his practice days, he was constantly trying to smooth that forehand out and get it longer. But the next day, match day had come, heavy topspin, short, high bounce. You know, he, he couldn't get away from what he did so well so often. Another race from Sinner, timely, video. But then when he went line or off, he hit with great depth. His racket would stay on the ball. Whenever he went cross, he'd tend to brush up it a little. And no substitute for depth. But I think these players, they just hit so many balls from a young age. They get so grooved so early. That's why their ground shots are so good. Oh. A lot of hand-fed shots too. They don't play live ball tennis, just balls fed out of a basket and they just groove their shots and build strength. Game seven. Was that Mark, a bad bounce or is he just a little over ambitious with his return stance? One game. Yeah, he, he's, getting, he's getting pretty close. Yeah, and again, he takes that big split step in. So I think he just lost a little bit. I mean, it was a heavy. Heavy ball as well. I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there. I think he looked at the bounce. I'll tell you what, there's some big, like, insects dropping all over the court. Maybe he might have hit one of those. Thank you. And a few seagulls chasing them down. Team. Big difference maker last time they played, and it's proving to be the case again. The ability to defend the second serve. Wow. Looks gnarly, that guy. Is that a cricket, a cicada? What is that? I guess more of a cricket. When you make Love your errors matter, we've seen 
Yannick makes some errors. Missed a drop shot at 30 love. He's missed a couple of forehands at 30 love. But at love 15, you dig yourself a little hole with that error. For Rublev. Depth in that Thinking. rally from both players was impressive. Just sitting here on this level, watching the way the rallies are being played, the way they're both hitting the ball. In my opinion, Rublev, if he continues this, it's going to be a short night. I just, I think he's going to need to mix things up, but I don't see that happening. Thirty fourteen. You know, Sinner just doesn't look rushed. You know, he looks like he's got more time on the ball, even though we know how Rublev can hit it. He just looks like he's got time. He's playing within himself. He's mixing up the play more. Yes. Backhands in the tape as Sinner not getting the necessary net clearance on the uh, highest part of the net. Everywhere. He's calculated the height there well, but here, not so much. Subtle adjustments have to be made as the night air gets that little bit cooler. Game. Good hold. Flips the tape. Oh, some good rear guard action from Rublev. It's 2 1 second set. Rublev First set, center. Mark, still a bit of humidity in the air. I've got to say, no. I don't feel it. Uh, I'm not going to say it's, you know. A little chilly, but you know you can wear a jump if you want to. Definitely not, not humid. Like I said, I think the, I mean the temperature is absolutely perfect to be playing, uh, and, and no wind at all. So you know, I don't think it's going to drop too much more. You know, tomorrow is supposed to be hot, so uh, you know I think it's pretty much going to stay like this. Perfect okay. conditions. Okay. It's pretty warm. It's, it's 25 degrees here in Melbourne, and that court would retain a bit of heat from the day because it was 30 plus so it's it's reasonably lively given it's 11 30 in the evening yeah you know what well it's it, if you told me if you didn't tell me it was 20 i would believe you 25 Bye. like i said i don't feel any humidity right now it's just it's really it's really nice temperature to play well if you're tuning in for the first time today uh, welcome from melbourne park you would have missed Novak Djokovic getting the better of Taylor Fritz earlier on in four sets. And the winner of this one will take on the 10 time Thank champion. You, Last time Djokovic lost here. Ready for play. 2018. It's 
mind boggling. Pitina. It just feels like Sinner has got him guessing corner to corner to corner to corner. I think that was the gesture we saw there on the serve. First serve percentage has been up nicely in the second set. And, you know, sometimes generating yeah, pace when you've got a bit of pace to work with is easy. Generating pace when you've got nothing to work with. This clips the tape and just sits there, but still gives it a mighty nudge. And low. Look at the wrist just snap through the ball. I've ever seen from Rublev in the full court. What a combination of shots that was. 30 all. And nice to see him move forward, not allow Sinner just to float it back and start the rally again. What a great point to build in, just to let his opponent know that, you know what, if you float it, I'm coming in. Give him something to think about. First guy I remember, Four, Robbie, that could just stand on the baseline and thrush the ball. Yes. Andre Agassi. Just flush the blade off both wings. Now you've got bigger men with more powerful equipment doing just that here tonight. Yeah, both these guys are using the same wand as Andre. As a head man. Throughout uh, the course of his career, for the most part, was Andre. Prince, early days. Yes. <laughs> oh, a gorgeous shape on that penultimate shot from Rublev. Don't see it all that often. And that's what Mark's been calling for. Just yes. that little bit of variety. You get you get the shape through the air, you get the kick off the court. But then your player has to work a little harder to get behind it. He's definitely still hitting the ball, guys. But like you said, just had a little more shape on a couple of those shots and and that mixes up the pace for, for Sinner. And yes. you know, it's easy to get used to something when it's coming at you in the same way. But that was a great little mix up. Let's for service.
against the line with another forehand of rich quality. And one of the battles within this overall war is who can hug the baseline the best. And look at Rublev here. He is camped right on it. Well, if he wins this point, this is almost a, a mirror image of what happened in the first set, isn't it? He was down 15.40, Rublev. He found a way out of trouble in his own service game. And now he's playing some quality all-court tennis here. Break point. Yes. Wow. 204, Robbie, out wide and quite an angle. And that's the fastest serve of this set for Senna. But it was so far up the line, it wasn't necessarily in the corner. Incredibly severe angle at 204. Wowza. How about that? I'd like to see him go wide here at about 175. Oh. Not on the second serve, Robbie. The first. Yeah, I thought that was a tough ball toss to go wide on anywhere. It looked like it was slightly left. Yeah, right? it was. Yeah, but that's that's ambitious on a second serve. Slider wide on the first. Get your man wide. You got a nice visual to hit in the open court for your second shot. Left and low, low, Robbie. No chance to hit up on the ball as a second serve. There. Bit of desperation, feeling the pressure. <laughs> Cannot believe it's wide. Yes. But it is. Well, he's prone to a bit of theatrics, isn't he? He's Andre. We saw it against him in art. Yeah, he would have wasted a challenge there if it was in play. Of course, everything is called automatically now. And don't we love it? Yeah, so much on the line. Okay, let's see if he goes wide here, first serve. Haven't seen enough of it, in my opinion. So that's, that's what it can do. It gives you a, a visual into the open court. And, and Rublev's got a really severe grip. So he, he's not going to block it. He's going to take a swing at it. You can get burnt. Don't get me wrong. But I think that's got to form a decent part of his repertoire until he gets burnt. Game. To make the changes to the serve in the hope that in big moments it produces dividends, and it certainly Two did in on. that game. A couple of crucial unreturns. It's funny, isn't it? Platform, step up. What you're really trying to do is just get a great shape under the ball. So if you, you can platform Thank or step you, up, but if your ball toss is not good, it will play. not matter. Excellent point. Get the ball toss right, first and foremost, and then just get yourself a good throwing motion. You want to see a good serve? Just videotape Ben Shelton's. Lights to service. He's dynamite under the ball. Yeah, I love Milos Raonic as well. If you, you, you talk about a, a nice shoulder rotation, that's the first movement he makes. It's such a power move, isn't it? Oh. Once again, the backhand finds the net. 15 on. Quite often you see players throughout the course of a night match, they'll send rackets off to be restrung, probably get them done a kilo or two looser, just to give them a bit more elevation. Oh. 
Just sitting here, especially the last 10 minutes, I definitely feel like Rublev is finding his rhythm, finding his range and his ground strokes. You know, not so flat and low over the net. And you think with all the tennis that Rublev has played to get here, this is a must-win set for him. Just in terms of concentration, the level of these two players, and then the physicality, it's hard to see Rublev winning three straight sets. Got to stay in the contest right here. He's actually never beaten Sinner in a competitive match. Have a look at the head-to-head, -head. two wins that he's had. One was just a couple of games in Vienna early on in their career back in 2020. The other was at Roland Garros. And Sinner had a left knee problem, had to retire early stages of the third set there. Ball. Just as I said, he found his rhythm. He's had three unforced errors. It just, it's just constant power coming from center. And it's so consistent and this gives you no time to breathe. pressure of a break point doesn't deter these two gentlemen from doing what they do best and that's going for it. I think he got a little lucky there. I think uh, he was looking to come in and maybe change his mind. And I thought he was going to get stuck in no man's land. But great footwork to get back and back in position to accelerate that forehand. Game over. That's another Rublev good Rublev Rublev after Rublev facing Rublev adversity. Rublev. Rublev's got the lead in the second. 3-2. Ability, hasn't he, Rublev, to make a few errors in clumps and get himself in a bit of trouble. But in that game, hit himself out of trouble. So the ace on break point, uh, on game point, I should say, big forehand on break point. He's got the firepower to hit himself out of trouble, but making errors is one thing. You just can't make them in clusters. And yeah, I think that's been his problem. The quarterfinal stage, Wally, when you start to play better opposition at the stage in a tournament, you, you throw in those clusters, you come unstuck. That's why he's never won a quarterfinal at a major. This is his 10th one. Pretty impressive, though, isn't it? It shows he's very good at beating the players right Nine. below him. Yeah. He rolled off all those matches that he played in the quarterfinals, and eight of them were virtually top five players. Well, let's take a, a quick step inside Rod Laver Arena if you were a patron. We're going to take you down into the good seats, the lower ball. 
What a fan experience it is. Every year it's constantly evolving and getting better. Thank you, ladies and, and gentlemen. And Robbie, you probably have some chips and a beer in your hand just as you're sliding down to your front row seat. Stop it. That's the serve I like against Rublev. Slider wide. You've got a lovely visual into the open court. And if he charges over that way to cover it, which he has to, you can wrong foot him. If you are going to serve him, the wide one out here on the forehand Third court, you've got to keep him honest. We've seen the body serve. You've got to be able to hit the flat tee, and it's the variety. And picking the right moment that will get the job done. Gentlemen and boys and Hawkeye tell us when he's gone out wide on the juice site, with that first serve and made it, 100% success rate. Let's... And see, Robbie, that's, you know, then obviously you can, if you've got control of the square, you go flat T to keep him honest. Yep. I mean, that was a let, but that's good serving. And we have seen two beautiful body serves as well. For me, great serves, they've got control of the square. The serve does something through the air, which means it'll do something off the court. The top end speed looks great and sounds great, but it's not the ultimate test of a great serve. And Roger Federer was a perfect example of exactly that. Oh. And then, of course, the quality of the second serve is the ultimate test. Beautiful beyond compare. A combination of those two shots, exquisite. So it takes a bit of pace up this backhand. It's all about placement. This shot, it's power much shorter in the court. Beats him for pace. How do you like that, gentlemen? Let's. For service. You can see that, Robbie. That's one ninety six to the forehand, so. 40, At 196, it come, it, there's too much forward momentum. You don't allow the ball to cut and slide. So, as we know, our good friend Mr. Rublev, I mean, he loves it right there in the slot. So, yeah, it's not, not how fast you serve it. It's the combination of accuracy and pace. That was just too quick to the forehand. Oh. That would have been a good body serve at 196. But out wide, it's got to be around in the 170s. Let the side spin do the work for you. Just propped with the net cord. And did he just reach for his stomach? Yeah, I just wanted to say, guys, it's the second time that he's reached something to his abdomen. I don't know what's going on, but a couple of games ago, he was reached, he put up his shirt and then something about his abdomen towards his box, and now... This is the second time he's done that. So something to keep our eye on. Yes, not a good look either. Bit of a flinch. Hey! 
and you know, well done there, Rube Levitt, once again. It seems quite high. Quite often when you strain an ab, it's really low. It's almost like a connective tissue down into the groin, but it's, it's almost midway through the abs. I like this from Rublev. I'm in a tough position. I'll just put you in a tough position if you pass me too good, and he didn't. There it is again. So you can see it's, it's high, isn't it? It's up, it's almost under the rib cage. A little bit of rib cartilage, possibly. Break point for Andre. But we're not seeing... The pace is not diminished, is it? Yes. Uh, no, I was looking. I was looking to see uh, if the pace was going to go down, but he just did a little stretch too. He just stretched backwards, so he's he's stretching a little bit too. So trying to stretch that stomach. So again, very interesting. But but that was two oh three down the centre. So definitely hasn't lost any pace. Oh. But Flip, I don't know. You used to serve thunderbolts. Did you ever have a, a stomach strain? To me, it always feels like it's, it's a lot lower. You know, once it, 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 it was a slight strain, but, but like you said, well, it was way lower. It's almost, yeah, like connective tissue where it kind of comes right down into the groin. This seems a, almost the bottom of the rib. Is that... Yeah, Let's him off the hook. New balls, please. Despite feeling a bit of discomfort there, he's only been broken twice in the tournament so far. Has Senna in the opening match against Botic van der Zanskop. And in the previous match against Karen Hashanov. That's it. Well, these two have played six times, and Sinner's retired twice. Yeah, the only two wins for Rublev, that's right. We don't want to see it a third time. No. Shouldn't bowl him off the ground. ladies and gentlemen. Those fans are allowed to come in now. I've been encouraged to come Ready in. Ready for play now. During the even games, which I like. Great innovation from Tennis Australia. The organising committee, I applaud it. We've been a little too rigid with the fans and their movement over the years. Oh. You know, right now he's stretching back a little bit. I'm wondering, and I've had it before, like a pinch nerve between the rib cage, where you kind of, it's a little uncomfortable. It almost feels like it's its the back between the shoulder blades as well. I'm not sure if the way he's stretching, I feel like it's almost, it could be something to do with more of the rib cage than the, than the ab. No, no signs of a, of a let up in terms of racket head speed or pace, but, and Mark, I'm probably going to butcher this and any physio listening will probably think, what on earth am I talking about? But, you know, intercostal joints where yes. the rib cage comes around, a little tweak there sometimes, catches your breath, feels awkward. There is again, so. I think you're on top. Yeah, you, you're right. Well, I think it's something like that. Just the way he's stretching. I've had that before, and just what he's doing right now to try and stretch it. Exactly what I felt like.
14.13. Well, we're talking about Sinner being a potential winner of this event. Look at what Novak had to endure last year with the thigh injury to make his way through the draw. Oh. I'm sure Rafa and Roger weren't feeling 100% chipper in some of their wins. Yeah. Got to play with a bit of adversity, a bit of pain. See how he reacts. It's been a good reaction here from Rublev. He struggled on serve, but he's still got the lead. 4-3. Well, next up to serve Yannick Sinner, and we've been uh, discussing how well he's hitting that serve out wide and how effective it's been, especially on the juice side, Wally. Yeah, well, I like the slider. As long as he doesn't hit it too hard, and you can see 88% effective sliding it down that centre tee. And, you know, that's, that's to Rublev's forehand. He has a very extreme grip. He's not going to block. So if you get the ball in the right spot, and it's uncomfortable for him to take a full-blooded drive, you know, you can get an error. Every now and then, if you don't get it quite right, he will burn you. The couple there that were effective to the body. We'll just have a look at the center serve. So the extension is good. We can't see anything different in the motion. It's just a few times he's pulled up after the point and reached for the stomach. But the serve and the power Time. is still effective. the hamstring issue that Novak had last year. What about in 2021? I think he had an abdominal problem that he was managing throughout the tournament. If memory serves. Robbie, you have the memory of an elephant. So I'm pretty sure you're correct. Channeling my inner Africa there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there he is again, he just reaches for the stomach. Love the team. Hey guys, this is, this is not, not something you want to see, but he's definitely trying to breathe through it and relax himself, but he's nodding his head, he's not happy. Um. And you, and you feel, Mark, too, when you get that sort of feeling, you know, to, to lie on your back and roll on a tennis ball, to roll it out. Maybe get the physio to come out and... We don't like to see that, do we, Robbie? Coming in cross-court to the forehand. Come on, How often it happens. And, and this is pretty low, so he can't get much juice on this. He's got to hit up and shape it and look how fast it came back. He didn't have enough time. He barely had time to split his step. Looks like Kid Rock in Rublev's box. It's not. Oh. Good jump. Talk about the ball doing something Third through the goal. air. If you get the height and the kick, it'll jump up off the court above shoulder height. And that, that is something that I feel Alex Dimina lacked against Rublev. He has a real dart of a serve, does Alex. He gets quite front on. And it did hurt him. He can't always hit through your opponent, but you can take the ball out of their strike zone as Sinner did just there. 156 with shape. Ball.
he dealt with the body serve well there, didn't he? He sort of got out of the way and just shaved his racket across the ball. Third found the middle. 14. Good improvisation there from Rublev. He's shown some good signs in this second set, and it is a pivotal second set. We've got the Italian reaching for what we think is a little strain, a little spasm potentially. Sixth break point of the match. Oh, oh, oh. That's inexcusable. You. All the time in the world on that forehand. Pick the serve. And you go back to Rublev, as good as he is in the 10 quarterfinals, not being able to advance past that. What do you think Novak would have done on that particular point? I just can't see Novak missing. No. The other guy might have hit a winner, but he wouldn't give it to him. Sometimes you've got to be a little mean on those break points. Advantage Sino. Attaboy. Bravo. Ale. Wide serve again. Proving effective. Game Still only broken twice this tournament. Four Finds off another break points. Mentioned the fact that. Behind Yannick Sin in the rankings, you've got Lorenzo Mazzetti, Matteo Arnoldi, Lorenzo Sonego. Good match against Carlos Alcaraz. Mariana uh, Valjovic, the chair umpire. Not sure what that was about. Couldn't quite catch it. Mark, any help? Did you catch any of what the conversation was about? No, no, I couldn't hear anything, but... Uh, yeah, sorry. No idea what that was about. It seems as though the chair umpire turns their microphone off for those discussions, and we can't get any effects. Oh! Just when you thought that Rublev was getting some rhythm and, you know, great love points 30. and you missed that four, and all of a sudden, from Love 30, rushing. I don't know what he had spoken about, you know, with that with that ref, but something like that, you can see how easily he can just, Please. just put off that rhythm. Thank you. But definitely something bothering him. He's not happy about something. Please, thank you. Of course, the winner of this match gets two days rest. Wouldn't play the semis till Friday, so... Team Sinner will be thinking, come on, let's find a way, find a way. We've got two days to work on you. That's you. Yeah, that's... Uh... Bald-headed gentleman there, Umberto Ferrar. That'll be his job. Fitness coach, barefoot specialist, trainer in Carnesius. A barefoot specialist? He, yeah. He treats bare feet. He's Maybe. barefooted when he treats? Don't know. But he I treats bare feet.
is that big, strong left leg. Doesn't retreat, just jams that left yeah, leg in laterally. Holds his ground. That's no. the barefoot specialist. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Not only that, well, it's almost like he's cutting off the angle. Not even sideways at times. So he almost like cuts off the angle a little bit. It's impressive. I love it. So impressive. Oh, these are such yes. significant points, aren't they, Robbie, given what we're seeing yeah, transpire just, here. The... Yeah, especially if he's injured, right? It just it takes me back to the match against him and all, that, that fifth game. If, if Demon can just win it to go 4-1 instead of 5-love, you know, there's a chance that Rublev cramps and it gets severe. That was severe. When Rublev's Rublev, Rublev, <laughs> Rublev, when Rublev speaks in his post-match interview, he seems very rational, good-humoured. But when he plays, he can be on the edge, just complaining about where that ball came off the strings. Right at the top. It happens, Andre. It was almost like uh, Yannick hit a couple of lines. Yes. And Rublev responded in kind. Yeah, both players on their respective break points not playing with enough margin on the forehand. Tense times. So, Robbie, where are the errors coming from for Sinner? Forehand. Uh, net. 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 Yep. Net. Consistently the net. Uh, yeah, now it's the... Just the, sights. Sinner's the one not giving it the shape that he was at the start, and Rublev is giving it more shape. It's interesting. It's just come out of nowhere. Buongiorno, Robbie. It's quarter yes. past 12 in the morning. <laughs> and he has just hit probably the best backhand of the evening outside the alley. So he's essentially hitting a cross court backhand down the line, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. A lot. Right back at him, though. This is a this is a moment. These Advantage. last few games of this second set could go a long way to determining this match. Both players now 18 apiece in terms of winners struck. Darren Kelly can still smile. Yeah, the man from Adelaide in South Australia.
boys, that, that is ridiculous hitting. The acceleration of both these guys, uh, not, I mean, my goodness, doesn't get any bigger than that four-wheel deuce, and then, <laughs> this guy's just taking it to another level. Thank you. Unfortunately, that one finding the tape, but man, it's just heavy hitting and relentless. Yeah. And Ullard, I think, is going to sneak off for a quick bathroom break. And we're going to take a sit down with the boys. It's 5 4 in the second set. Robbie, can he do that? I guess he can. Of course he can. But he's got to do it within the time change, yes, right? No problem. Then. How's that going to work? Well, I, be I believe there's a toilet right there. I think that's what he was checking with the chair part a little earlier. Is oh, there a bathroom just yeah. that's, yeah. that's exactly what he was saying. He goes, can I just run? It's just, and he was just saying it's just to the side, on the right-hand side, outside. So that's what it was about. So this won't count as an official bathroom break because he's doing it within the allotted time. What if he's not back in time? What happens? Time warning? Time violation? Uh, he's already back. He's already running back. That was quick. Andreas Egli just walking towards us there. Tournament referee. And that's how a toilet break is done, folks. Just like that. That's good. We haven't Dang. lost any time whatsoever. Robbie, just imagine. Riblev race to the bathroom there. Yes. At end change. <laughs> there was a queue. Oh, no. That would have been good. Uh, it's one of those occasions where you say, "Jump the queue." Yes, got a oh. flight to catch. Now this is getting very, very interesting. So having to stay in the second set is Sinner you know, with a little bit of an air problem by the looks of things. Always, uh, Doctor Masur is suggesting perhaps intercostal muscle. Fifteen. Uh, he has rubbed on a couple of occasions. I'm making a diagnosis from a great distance. I haven't spoken to the patient. I could be wrong. <laughs> Lights for service. I am a hypochondriac, so I do have some medical knowledge. <laughs> been effective hasn't it swinging serve he still hits it a bit hard for my liking but he's getting the result an Italian rooster To boys this evening. That was a shot that was uh, invented by Marcelo Rios that jumped back in. There it is again, the ability to generate pace when you've got none to work with. 
goes with the slice, it floats a little, and bang. Doesn't get better than that. You don't and want your slice to float, because it hits the court, goes straight up in the air, gives Rublev the height that he needs. Game. Yeah, Simone is Quiet. delighted. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Pitima. Ah. The feature of his previous round against Alex Dimina, Rublev, the cooler the night air became, he still had the power to hit through it. Dimina did not. Can Sinna stay with him as things just slow down Tila. ever so slightly with each hour we progress? into the Melbourne night. Yeah, it is an Andre special. That felt like a 60-second hold. Keep his fans very happy. 6-5, second set. himself better than I thought he might. I thought he might be a little fatigued after his previous round and his efforts to get here. He lost that first set. Yeah, those break points that he saved in the third game I think were huge, right? Remember, down 15-40, he fought those off. I think if he goes down an early break there, the set could be very different. Uh, he did well. Almost turned it around completely and broke Sinner in the next game. Yeah, he's 0 for 6 on break points. Sinner's yeah. 1 for 6, so they're, they're both getting their chances, but both playing awfully well on those Time. break points. Sort of think the first man to blink is going to make a big difference. Now they all visit the same Taylor. Certainly love their tennis. They've come uh, well attired to this evening's match. 25 minutes off the midnight local time. Still plenty of tennis ahead. Picking up. This, this next five, ten minutes is just going to be so incredibly important. I mean, for both, but I just feel like for, for Sinner right now, you know, he's. 
I don't want to say hanging in there is hitting the ball incredible, but but I think you're right, Rolly. Is it slowing down a touch? Is his ball dropping a little bit shorter, or is Rublev just getting a little more comfortable as this match goes on? Four and a half four stairs from Sinner. I can tell you in this set, and four stairs total ten. And half have come from that side, the four inside, side, three off the back end. And you've got the two double faults in there as well, making up the ten. I mean, that, that serve has just been huge for him. He's just Four found it in, 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 in the times that he's needed, especially the one out wide on the advantage, which is probably the toughest serve to hit in tennis. Highest part of the net, shortest part of the court, and he's finding an incredible angle on that serve. Craig Tarley on the left there, CEO of Tennis Australia. Tournament director. Doesn't do that, Robbie. You can't serve there at 193. It just comes out of the racket of Rublev. It's 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 getting cooler. 40, 30. It'll just come nicely, nice height. And Craig Tiley, I wonder how many hours of sleep he gets a night during the three weeks of the Australian Open, two weeks of the tournament proper, the week of qualifying. Not to mention the whole lead-in. It's an absolute festival of tennis. Are the slams? Oh, a couple of decorative forehands there. Well, you just get the feeling Rublev is winning the arm wrestle at the back of the court. And provided he doesn't pepper his play with unforced errors in groups, which we've seen from time to time in this match, we're looking the slightly better of the two. Of course, the sinner serve getting him out of trouble more often than not. Back to Juice. Good little block there from Rublev. We don't see a lot of it. He's adjusting. Once again, he's going there with heat, you know. That's too quick. All players should take a little time just to check out Adrian, Man Adrian Manorino and his wide serve and just how he goes about it. Game two. Yeah, I might have heard you, Wally. Check out mine. He's got the big flat bomb out wide. <laughs> yes. I'm talking Six about the, the slider to the forehand. Oh, I know. Okay. This is going to be pivotal, one thinks, in the context of this match. So just clutching his abdominal on occasions. We don't know what's going on there. The amount of miles that Rublev has in his legs. 11 and a half hours coming into this quarterfinal. Just Thank over you. eight and a half Ready to play, for Rublev. Excuse me, for Sinner. One, zero, Rublev. And there was a staggering stat with Novak at the French Open when he played a, a series of tie breaks on his way to the final. 
there was a staggering stat of just how many unforced errors he made. He made so few. He made every return. He made his opponent play. And he was just about perfect. Thank you. In those tie breaks. Let's see how these two men approach it. Yeah, that, those tie breaks at the majors, I think, dates back to the ones against Federer, right? When he yeah. beat him at Wimbledon, didn't make any unforced errors in two. And isn't that a discipline, not to overplay, but then not to push, but just to understand the right blend of power and accuracy when it matters most. Lovely point there from Yannick Sinner, redirecting the backhand. Cross line, cross line, that's hard to defend. Yannick, it's too fast. It's too fast. It's just coming on beautifully. Two, one. It's 195 out wide. That should be 20 kilometers an hour slower with side spin. Darren, you need to just get the message to him. Right in the hitting zone. There's no movement off the court. Plenty moving off the court there at 206. 3 1, Rodrigo. Right. range on that forehand that's an overplay here it's another forehand of rich quality a bit of side spin just to get it to fade somewhat Fernando Vicente knows all about a solid forehand he had a pretty decent one himself This is reminiscent of the fifth set against Dimina. He was just unplayable. They were not poor shots from Sinner, but it's pretty apparent. Right now, if you haven't got Rublev on the run, you're in trouble. Look at that little grouping there from Sinner. Three pretty much up the corridor. Sinner isn't able to spread the court, and he's just standing and delivering. Yeah, coach. That one's for you. Thank you. Please. Jeez, flirting with danger. He went there again. It was right in the strike zone. That could cut back cross court. Five, two. At about the same pace you served it. You know, I agree, I agree with what you're saying, Wally, with that wide serve, but... He hasn't really done nothing wrong here, and he's only won two points in this, in this tiebreaker. That's how good Rube Rub Lev is hitting the ball, and, and he's just taken it up another level. And he's also got some um, great shape on the ball. Not only is he ripping the ball, he's found that shape.
doesn't Look get better that. than that. A filthy forehand. That whole point was ridiculous, guys. My goodness. Thank you. to the serve at 5-1. Five, five, it looked like he was okay. certain to take control of the tie break was Rublev. And now suddenly it's 5-4, back on serve. Please. Thank you. Again, that aggressive return position. Five all. It was a body serve. He had to pick a side, but he, he actually... I mean, he hit a backhand from almost the centre tee. Just picked the wrong way to go. Thank you. Four points in a row means it's five apiece. Foster serve of the match. And one of the most accurate. Did well, didn't he, Rublev, to get it back? Yeah. And he hasn't come in that much. It was just the sixth foray forward. What a time to do it. We haven't seen any serve volley from, from either player. Too much respect for the yes. ground shots. No real commitment in the crowd to catch that one. That was on the edge. We're running a little bit of a risk of be tipping over. over That's yeah. right. It's never good. I thought about it for a second, boys, <laughs> but uh -huh. just there it is, five one. You know when you're playing, Robbie, you you just want to wind the clock back. A couple of minutes. Just can we do that over? How could I lose that from 5-1? I was in the complete ascendancy. Thank you.
you know, Four, from five zero. one, well, I can't really say Rublev did anything no. that wrong. Like in the, you know. No, I agree. He, he he actually didn't. I mean, how was the running forehand from Sinner? Just came up with the right shots at the right time. Oh. have how much more does he have in the tank you know early round two sets to love max the match against alex and now <laughs> she's gonna have to find a way to win these next three sets years and the two hours that you have spent ben on the match court have come to naught so you start all over again but the great ones can wipe the slate clean i've never seen anybody do it better than the doll this seems to be a computer that he can reset absorb that disappointment be resilient and rublo will need a little bit of that Sometimes in tennis, it's, uh, it pays to have a bit of Alzheimer's. Yeah. Not be able to remember what just occurred. A few fans starting to leave. Oh, that's nice. Once again, moving forward. And Robbie, you know, a few fans that are right in the back of the bleachers are now sneaking Lovely. down to some empty seats down the front, so they're going to get closer to the action. Taking advantage of a few gaps in the stadium. Let's for seven. shot that Djokovic will take cognizance of no. forehand down the line you know when you're in trouble you can almost give him that say okay if you're gonna you're gonna beat me with the winner I'm not gonna let you beat me cross court because the one down the line is the one what you're making most of your unforced errors on Sinner and Djokovic playing Two epic matches towards the tail end of the season. Davis Cup finals in Malaga. Oh. Sort of saving a match point. Beating Djokovic, saving a couple, in fact. Novak had love 40. <laughs> Isn't that just the way with Novak? He beat Novak, but you've got to preface it by saying Novak had a couple of match points. That's how close it was. He just yeah. can't put that guy away yeah. easily. And, and just to put that into perspective, I think Roger's number of matches that he lost after having match point was in the 20s. 20 something. Close yeah. to double digits okay. and for Novak, just the four. New balls, please. One game more. I think there'll be a lot of tennis fans around the world that will be itching to see a rematch. Of course, they played twice in the tour finals, they played in the round robin stages. Novak won that one, seven six in the third, then beat Yannick in the finals a couple of days later. And on the 
the Davis Cup semi-final. That's where this guy saved three match points and went on to win. And of course, that was the semi-final match. Thank then you. hit Australia in the finals for all the marbles. from Rublev and if Yannick was looking down the court and was aware he would have made him play another couple of heavy balls because he Love was on the edge there him. ladies and gentlemen please I mean look at some of the depth on these shots shout out during playing back of the line thank you so if he has a little look just here there's no way he plays that shot. It's about a high, heavy forehand. I like that serve, Robbie. One five two with shape. That's the clay court play, isn't it? Heavy out to the back end. Get your man running. Yep. You just had him doing a little windscreen wiper drill in the previous point. Set it up again. In. Incinerator, I like that one. You can beat players with winners and forced errors, or you can just win by attrition, wear them down. Oh. Or a combination of the two. Yep. I just love, you know, it's impressed by the look that Rublev has. I mean, you can see he's here to fight. He's not going anywhere. He's got some stuff left in the tank. And he just puts his head and goes to work and keeps doing what he's doing. That one well tonight, hasn't he? I think that takes the ace count into the double digits. Another one that has burned the line. A line liquor, as they say, in South Africa. for six and break points in this match. Can Andre Rublev finally make a breakthrough on the center serve? Just looking at his camp, almost asking the question, where do you think he's going to go? The answer is we're not sure. Ball. Again, that aggressive stance chases his body. Yes. This time, once again, it's, in, it's into the backhand once again. And you think maybe, Robbie, maybe. Does he just retreat a little bit and be determined to get that second serve back into play? He's been burnt with the body serve on numerous occasions. Oh. 
0 for 7. Just has to do something a little different on those break points. Okay, it's going to get another chance right here. Advantage. First serve, you've just got to do your best. He's obviously very capable of blowing that first serve by you. Just do your best to get it back. But that second serve, got to make him play. Too good. Almost got to give him the tee now, don't you? On this backhand court. Yes. Cover wide and make him ace you down the tee. He's very capable of doing that, obviously, but he's been relentless with the wide flat serve. 208, one of his fastest serves for the evening. To the hardest point of the court. That'll work. That'll work very well. And Robbie, you talk about the line yes. forehand from, from Yannick. And sometimes to the off forehand. Just here. So this is an off forehand, but he much directs it down the corridor. Almost wraps the frame around the side of the ball. Doesn't get that ball moving away. Gets away with it, but it makes me nervous when it's just right in the hitting zone of Rublev and he can take that big a cut at it. Eventually, he's going to get that right. Yeah. That's an important hold. Once again, fight soft break points. That's been a theme Sinari in this match. Two games to one. And Yannick leads 2 1 in the third. Hardy's yeah. oh, been so accurate with that. Serve when break point down. This is similar serve placement, both first and second. There's two aces mixed in there. And these are the eight break points that he has saved. And you can see the tightness to the sidelines with the first serves, of course, and some of those second serves. Lovely depth on that body serve that Wally was talking about, the blue ball. Even though it's in the middle of the box, there's decent depth to it. So, when he has been facing break points, Time. he has done well. Eight faced, eight saved. Oh, the way the scoring system has been designed, you have to play the big points well in our sport, but Rublev has not played them well enough. That's why he finds himself down two sets to love, down 2-1. Eight break points have come and gone. Ah. Just can't afford any laps or dip. Now Rublev...
to 13. 13. And if you think of players fatiguing, you keep an eye on their serve. If you lose a little power in the legs, you don't get up and over. He's obviously still feeling pretty good, Rublev, really, to generate that sort of pace. Was that his fastest serve for the match so far, 213? No, he's got one of 215, Mock. No. Not far behind, though. Yeah. Pretty good response after the disappointment of the previous game where he Two games was on. unable to convert some break points. So as you said, Mark, he's done a good job of just putting his head down and absorbing the disappointment of the scoreboard and getting on with it. Do you think sometimes, Robbie, when there's respect between two players, and these, we saw these guys high-five each other in the tunnel before they came out? Yes. It, it sort of helps with the attitude of a player? Definitely. <laughs> Mark, could you be like that with an opponent? Because... I could not. I struggled to be good friends with somebody and then play well against them. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do the high five in the tunnel, <laughs> to be honest with you. You know, of course, the respect after the match, but uh, that's an interesting one. You, Wally? Kind of chance. Uh, I was a high five kind of guy. You were? Yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, my director's just said something very interesting. Yeah. High five to the face, maybe. <laughs> well, it's combative, it. to say the least, this man alongside me. We, we see it a bit with Alcrez, don't we? There's just a certain joie de vivre to the way he competes. It's not, there's no great animosity. A la McEnroe and Connors. Sam and Agassi. There's yep. no tension. Mm. Sharapova said she had to couldn't be friends with any of the any players in the locker room. Just took the edge of her game. Consider the physicality of this sport now because the ball gets from A to B so quickly, the movement is so dynamic, that's tiring. But the effort of every shot, the rotation, the racket head speed, loading up off the ground, I mean, every shot is physical. 27 of them in that last rally. Wow. It's brutal. I mean, I'm just sitting here. The level that I have right now, when I'm looking at that last point, I just laughed. I didn't know what else to do. I mean, they're hitting the ball so hard, and it's just that consistent. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous how physical this match is, and they have not slowed down at all. Please, thank you. Game. Yeah, a game of tennis excellence right there. Yannick leads 3 2 in the third.
Robbie, interesting in this half of the draw. All players using head rackets. Then in the other half of the draw, Zverev also using head rackets. Popular Thank flag. You. Five out of the eight. It's just not something he's worked on a lot in the course of his career, and you just wonder if it's a little something he Love can him. add over the next few years. It's this shot right here. It's such an interesting discussion point because does he risk coming forward at the expense of losing matches? Well, in important stages in matches, or well, I guess it, how does it evolve, Wally? I, I don't. He's 26 now. Yeah. He's making bank, right? Yeah, but does he? Does he not want to crack one of these things? Mm -hmm. Guys, in my opinion, just watching, you know, watch a couple of matches, but especially like this, I'm really focused on, on looking at him at times. It's, I, I believe that's never going to happen. He's just very set in the way he plays. He plays incredibly impressive tennis. He's the ball so hard. I just don't see him being that guy to mix up the play coming to the net. Yeah, well, you both just shot me down. <laughs> I, feel a bit I feel a bit deflated, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not a good idea, Wally. I'm just saying I don't see him doing that. Will it, better, will it benefit him? Absolutely. But I, I just don't see him... Being you know, willing to do it. Yeah, yeah. being going to practice called let alone a match, an, an important point. I just see him gripping it and ripping it as hard as he can, definitely yeah. not moving forward. Yeah, I'm sure one of his favorite sporting characters would be Kenny Powers. Four Fast meters. ball only. He's bound and down. If you've never seen it, it is hilarious. So good. <laughs> ball. He's a baseball pitcher who only wants to throw the fastball. He's not interested in any change-ups. He's yes. not interested in any sliders or knuckleballs. It's fast and more heat. That's the feeling we get with Sinner. Excuse me, with Rublev. and magnificent it's the it's the angle the uh, pace and then the work on the ball this is the final ball where he's wrong footed but he had to work so hard on the previous shot to get behind it thank you please just that little bit of extra jump and spin from Sinner. evening he's provided a challenge but the next round if he does get Sina through will be the ultimate challenge on this court 
They'll that man a, awaits. They'll need another new, another board for Novak soon, the way he's going. But wasn't that a lovely combination? Just Beautiful spread way. the court beautifully, and those little dancer steps just to turn that last ball into a forehand. Thank you. Confidence will be coursing through his blood now. Oh. Is it a break until you've held your own serve and confirmed the break? I tell you, Rublev can hold his head high. He's been good tonight. He's actually been, well, he's a great player, but he's physically he's been better than I thought. I mean, he has stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sinner for two hours and 28 minutes. He hasn't blinked. Ditto. Has not done a thing wrong. He's been beaten in the big moments by the Italian. Yet. Pitino. There it is again, that awareness, the quick step and the confidence. 13. Actually a pretty easy shot for a lot of these guys, isn't it? It's the same grip as their forehand. It's produced exactly the same as their forehand. Just taken out of the air. Light for service. spoke about the backhand down the line at times he doesn't get it quite right but if he's got that sort of time on the ball he will once again big first serve requiring a block plenty of time to get set and once they've Thank got a strong you, base these two boys don't make too many mistakes oh. from the Italian. Five games to two, third set. You know, also good news, I haven't seen Sinner at all touch that um, higher abdominal or rib or whatever he was, you know, that was bothering him for, for uh, towards the end of that second set. Could it be adrenaline? Could it have been something that was a little twinge? Who knows? But anyway, that's a great thing for him. Not to be worrying about. Great for the tournament. Great in terms of this contest. Um, this guy's such an exciting player. We would hate to see his chances cooled by injury or illness. But as you say, it's pretty up and about right now. 
To lose a surf at this year's Australian Open and looking pretty good in this quarterfinal right now. Just a game away. Thank you. Ready for play. You know, obviously Rublev here would like nothing more just to have one last swing at that serve of Sina. As a coach, you always like to see your player, if it's Sinner, put some pressure on this game. I always feel like it's better to be in this game than not. The idea that he can just rush through it to love, for example, doesn't sit well with me. You want to just... Keep the pressure on. Boys were just having a chuckle there, given how hard Senna hit that last ball. Game. Yeah. Just smacked it away. It's almost going to hit it. Come on. Asking for more. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, I was saying the last forehand that Senna hit is probably the, easily the biggest forehand he's <laughs> hit the whole match. And that's saying something. Yep. Brilliant. Thank you. Serving for a place in his very first Australian Open semi-final. And a couple of minutes ago, Mark said he would love one more swing at the center serve, and that's what he does. He swings viciously. He has not retreated, has he, Mark? Once again, aggressive yeah. position. Yeah, I mean, like, he's standing pretty close to the baseline. But like I said, when that ball toss goes up, he takes a huge split step and he gives himself no room at all if his opponent's going to serve to his body. I mean, that was a quality serve to the body, but he had no chance. And, of course, he's not going to block that as well. He's going to take a big cut and he just there's no room. Oh. 
bit of tension. Creeps in. It's good to know, isn't it, Robbie? Even the great ones get a little tight. Trying to serve out a match. Thank you. What a final of a Grand Slam. There's a lot at stake. No tension that time. Two hours and 38 minutes of some of the most violent hitting we've seen at Melbourne Park this year. Sinner is at much point. Please. so great getting to this point and you go back to that second set tiebreak where he led 5-1 would have all been so very different but uh, Yannick Sinner he kind of summed it up there's power to burn but there's some intelligence and he's pretty brave in the big moments the Italian he backs himself and he's going to have a chat with Jim Courier now. Let's go down courtside. Hey, Yannick, that was, that was some match, boy. You guys hit the ball so hard, so cleanly. I got to ask you, is, is a match like that, can you even enjoy it in the moment? Or are you so locked in on the competition that you can only look at it after it's over and appreciate it? <laughs> no, for sure I appreciate it when it's over, but... Um, it's uh, obviously very tough to play against him. We, we had some really tough matches in the, already in the past. Also, today was, was three sets, but I could have lost both first sets. I, I, I had, or he had, so many break points, and I somehow served really well on that one. And, but it goes everything so fast, that it's just more kind of reaction and then and trying to to move him a little bit more than, than I do. And obviously, I, I want to thank everyone for staying so long. It's uh, 125. Um, it's, uh, it's always, it's always a, a huge pleasure to play here in, on this court. It, it doesn't really matter the time. It's, uh, um, I really appreciate it and, and happy to be in the next, in the next round. And, and you get a couple days off, so that's good. In that second set, in the tiebreaker, he had you in real trouble, 5-1. What were you thinking at that moment, and how did you escape and win the next six points? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it was... Uh, I just tried, and um, on 5-1, we changed hands. Uh, that was a little bit windy, so I knew I had a little bit of advantage. Um, I, I, I tried to hold the serve for 5-2, and then somehow 
breaking him at, at least once and, and, and I did it twice, then I was 5-4 on serve and um, you know, but this is all really, really tight but actually these kind of moments I, I really love to play. This is why I, why I practice for and I'm, I'm really exciting when, when we always have these pressure points on and I'm, I'm just trying to stay aggressive so it, it, it went my way today so I'm really happy. Two years ago, you were in the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, and Stefano Tsitsipas played beautifully, and he beat you in three sets. You were 20 years old, you were ranked 10 in the world, and you did something that most players in that situation wouldn't do. You decided to make some changes, very bold changes, a new team, and you now find yourself two years later probably where you were aiming to be challenging now, uh, deep in these tournaments, number four in the world. What's that journey the last two years to, to become the player that you are today with your new team been like? Yeah, for me it's always really important the process I make as a player, not only but also as a person and uh, I have to say the my team, what I have, the, the company which is, we, we, we were talking before the tournament actually, the the most important thing is, is, is the company you have and uh, this will last you for forever because I spend so much time with, with these people there um, which is uh, obviously a, a really, really nice feeling and, and obviously when the, the, uh, the success comes we are all happy and, and, and if not we, we still have good company, good fun and, um, but we always will, will try to to, to work as hard as possible, and then we see what, what I can reach. Well, the work's paying off, there's no doubt. This, this effort tonight, it puts you into the semifinals of a major for the second time. You made your first one last year at Wimbledon, so you're going to meet the same opponent. Novak is, is the person you played in Wimbledon. You'd never beaten him at that point. He, now you've beaten him twice. How does this match with the experience that you gained in the semifinals and the experience in beating him the last two times, well, two of the last three times you played him, how does that change your outlook in this match? Yeah, I'm really lucky to face him again. This is uh, one of the biggest tournaments in the world. Happy that I can play against the number one in the world. He won here sometimes, so <laughs> it's going to be tough. But... Um, the only thing I can control is, is that I will give my 100%, I will, I will fight for every ball, and then, then we'll see what, what the outcome will be. Two days off, congratulations to Yannick Sinner. Another very fine performance. He's into the semifinals.